Good morning, everyone. Today, let us begin with number 392, 392. Open my eyes, Lord, help me to see your face. Open my eyes, Lord, help me to see. Open my ears, Lord, help me to hear your voice. Open my ear. Lord, help me to hear. Open my heart, Lord, help me to love like you. Open my heart, Lord, help me to love. I live with it. Deep in your heart, O oh love, I live within in you. Rest now in me. And so we begin our celebration by blessing ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Coming into the Lord's presence, we ask for forgiveness and healing, especially for the times when we did not want to heal, did not want to see, did not want to give ourselves to the Lord, and we ask for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the bright sun of justice. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the redemption that is at hand. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory to rule heaven and earth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Defend your church, O Lord, by the protection of the holy apostles, that as she received from them the beginnings of her knowledge of things divine, so through them she may receive even to the end of the world an increase in heavenly grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After three months, we set sail on a ship that had wintered in the islands of Malta. It was an Alexandrian ship with the Dioscuri as its figurehead. We put in at Syracuse and stayed there three days. And from there, we sailed round the coast and arrived at Regium. After a day, a south wind came up and in two days, we reached Puteoli. There, we found some brothers and were urged to stay with them for seven days. And thus, we came to Rome. The brothers from there heard about us and came as far as the Forum Appius and three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul gave thanks to God and took courage. When he entered Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldiers who was guarding him. He remained for two full years in his lodgings. He received all who came to him with complete assurance and without hindrance. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. 
Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known in the sight of the nations. He has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness towards the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song. Sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations saving power. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the melodious song, with trumpets and the sounds of the horn. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations saving power. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what was happening. They told him Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. The people walking in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent, but he kept calling out all the more, son of David, have pity on me. Then Jesus stopped and ordered that he be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He replied, Lord, Please let me see. Jesus told him, Have sight. Your faith has saved you. He immediately received his sight and followed him, giving glory to God. When they saw this, all the people gave praise to God. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, imagine for a moment what it would be like to be blind. You wouldn't be able to see the beautiful landscapes, the sunrises and sunsets. You wouldn't see the smile in someone else's face or looking into their eyes. There is so much that you and I take for granted. And so sometimes we find it difficult then to put ourselves into a position where we can identify with someone who doesn't have that gift. Even though visually impaired people experience blindness as part of their physical existence every day, in some ways, however, we can also relate in some way with them. For example, we often do not know what is ahead of us. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? We face so many uncertainties every day. We worry about, maybe about our job, financial security. We worry about a loved one who struggles with a disease. We worry about the future. The future, we feel, is very uncomfortable for all of us. We would like to know. And sometimes our investigation or our seeking 
betrays us because we want to know what's going on in somebody else's life. And sometimes I want to say, it's none of your business. But are all, we're all busybodies. But part of it is because we do want to know and we feel very uncomfortable when something just evades us. We have no idea. We walk in a certain way in darkness. That brings us to the gospel today. Here's a man who had been born blind. We don't know whether he heard about Jesus, but when he's told that Jesus is coming by, he immediately springs up, jumps up, and calls, Son of David, have mercy on me. There's something unique about this person. I often ask myself, in what way am I like this person who doesn't know, who doesn't see, who doesn't understand? Those are our common experiences. And human as we are, and we all have grown up, there's a wonderful expression that I often use. You know, as a child, we were excited about everything. And we were not afraid of anyone because we trusted people. And then someday, somebody, somebody comes along and says, why don't you grow up? Why don't you grow up? And we figured that was the dimension, that's the direction to go. And since then, when that happened in our lives, we think we can do it. We all think we're independent. We don't need anybody. And so we have a difficult time when we see somebody who is no longer capable of doing the things that we're able to do when things are normal. Or we not even ask God to help us. Today's gospel, the man, the blind man, he reflects something that is in each and every one of us. But we wouldn't admit that we are in need. That goes against our American concept of being independent, do it yourself, all of those things, and we fall right into the trap. And so as a result, sometimes our prayer is just that. Or we tell the Lord what he's supposed to do in our lives rather than to come with humility and say at the beginning, Lord, I am in need. I can't do certain things anymore. Help me to see. Help me to hear, as the song says. Help me to open my heart that is often we put a wall around it and nobody can get through it. And we are that angry person that nobody wants to talk to. Well, if that's what self-independence means, it's gone in the wrong direction. And maybe if our prayer goes that way, you know, we deal with God in the same way. We want to have instant gratification, instant everything. And what happens when we don't get it? We give up. Oh, God didn't really listen. He doesn't care about my prayers. You see what's happening here. So this example today, and notice the people, what did they say to the man? Why don't you shut up? But he kept asking because he believed what Jesus actually told us and taught us. Ask and you will receive. How do I ask? How do you ask every day? Do we do it with faith? Do we only do it as long as we get what we want? Or are we consistently asking, Lord, help me. Help me to open my mind. Help me to open my heart. Help me to see what you see in me. And then help me to see what you see in other people. That's what today's gospel is about. That's the good news. And the blind man gives us that encouragement to do exactly as Jesus asked. Ask, and you will receive. Not the way I want it, or the way you want it, but what is in our best interest. And God always has his best interest when it comes to us. So let us then share our prayer with the Lord and say, Lord, 
What is it that, I need, that I'm not seeing? What is it that I'm not hearing? And boy, when we're really honest with that, it's a long list because we don't want to admit that we are in need. And as long as that happens, God cannot do anything for us because we're not asking. Trusting in God's mercy, let us now offer our prayers for the church and for the world in which we live. We remember today all those who are being persecuted and imprisoned because of their faith, that they rejoice to share in Christ's suffering and that we help ourselves to understand that faith comes with a challenge for all of us. For this we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for people of every land, that they be free to worship God in peace. And when that is not, able, it's not possible, that they do not give up. And that we do not give up when things don't come our way. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to understand when there are wars and earthquakes and famines that often may lead us that God that you don't care, but you help us also to understand that that is an opportunity for us to reach out to those who are in need and to help them, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all the people during this month of November whom the Lord has called to himself, that we continue to ask them to pray for us, we pray to the Lord. And for all the members of the Little Flower Society and those who continue to share their resources with the Carmelites in their missionary work around the world, that you will bless them, Lord, we pray. And today I have a special prayer for all our Eucharistic ministers, our lectors, and the people who help us celebrate the Eucharist every day who never ask why, but simply do it and share what is best in them with others, that the Lord will bless them and their families. We pray to the Lord. For a moment now, let each, of one, each one of us make their own intentions. And for all of these intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for listening to all of our needs. Help us to open our eyes, help us to open our ears, and most of all, help us to open our heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory collection is taken up for the support of the shrine and the museum and we thank you for your generosity. And then let us turn to page 365, 365. And we will sing number one with the asterisk in front. At that first Eucharist, before you died, O Lord, you prayed that I'll be one in you. At this our Eucharist, again preside, and in our hearts your love, love renew. Oh, may be all one bread, one body be. Through this blessed command of your 
Dignity. And now, my sisters and brothers, let us pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we bring you this offering of our service, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that the truth handed down to us by the ministry of the apostles Peter and Paul may endure undefiled in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on up apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we say to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. <coughs> the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Thank you. And now let us reach out and share the peace of Christ with each other. Peace of be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ.
O oh Lord, you have the words of eternal life, and we have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. <clears throat> Let us pray. May your people, O oh Lord, nourished by the bread of heaven, rejoice in commemorating the apostles Peter and Paul, for it is through your gift that we are governed under their patronage. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace. And we greet Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Therese. I want to thank Father Matthew here, who is from the Congo, giving retreats and missions here in the United States for celebrating this Mass with us today. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Have a wonderful day.